I remember a couple, I think it was 11 days before the election, the FBI uh, op- said that they were going to open the investigation because uh, possibly Uma Ebedin and uh, Anthony Weiner were sending emails from their personal computer. Oh, yeah. And uh, that hurt Hillary Clinton's, uh, at least with the public, the general public. And uh, some, not all, but some people... Uh, point to that as the reason why Hillary lost the election. Uh, I don't know why Hillary, well, I know why Hillary lost the election. Democrats were schizo. They were acting crazy. But I'm glad old Wiener got 21 months. You know, he was trying to get off because there wasn't a precedent for it, but now there is. And that sends a message to all the other people out there who want to be stupid and sending their, 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 their private parts to little girls and trying to entice little girls like this and Beat all this pedophilia that's out there. Yeah, you should get more than that. You should get 21 months and and and, and get beat too. You know, they should spank you a little behind. Yeah. Uh, you do you? So you think he should get two uh, two, almost two years? Yeah, it's not enough. But I think he should have got more. This is this is this is really. I mean. It, this is such a moral issue too, you know. This isn't just a legal issue. This is a moral issue. This is this is as far-reaching kind of tentacles, you know. It's just not Weena doing this stuff. I think because the name and 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 the, the the slang for the part and everything makes it even comical to some people, and it's really they're not seeing the gravity of this thing. There's other people out there doing the same thing, and when they get caught, there was nothing. For them, you know, they get a slap on the wrist or they get house imprisonment or they get probation and stuff. No, now you're going to jail and you should be put into the main populace of jail too. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And then, then you can walk around and and, and and you can do text your little wiener there. If you want to. He should be stoned to death. That's, That's what happens. Should. Yeah. This is, a, this is a, a, an assault against morality against little kids. This isn't right. So I, I, I'm glad that he got 21 months. I think it should have been more. And I think there should have been some flogging uh, attached to it too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down for flogging. Flogging, that's another uh, another biblical punishment that they yeah. used to hand out. So you flogging know, works flogging, for me too. Man. Lots of salt in the wound. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he should did, he should face some he should have gotten something more than 20 even though he didn't I think 21 months is fitting. You think it's fitting? If he would have actually had contact with the girl, physically touched the girl or physically slept with the girl, then I think he should have gotten uh more time. But he was trying. Yeah, he was trying, but he didn't. <laughs> so you know, it's almost like assault and battery. It's almost like attempted murder and murder. Attempted murder carries a different charge than murder. You don't charge a person for murder if they didn't actually murder the person. You charge them for attempted murder. He didn't rape anyone. He no. attempted to yeah. by sending the pictures, but he didn't uh, physically violate anyone. So I think that uh, 21 months may be appropriate. Maybe he could have gotten a little bit longer. Uh, but I gave him longer and flogging. But it ruined, he ruined Hillary Clinton's campaign. Okay about Hillary. But you know, yeah, his wife, Weena's wife was the um, thing for Hillary Clinton. Uh-huh. Yeah, and hey, Hillary, this just, just gets to show that we just had the worst election in, in the history of elections. Yep. All elections, local and everything like that. This was the worst election. And we can still see it's going on today in the way that Worcester's running their election. Mm-hmm. Totally, totally crazy. But that presidential election, we started out with a huge number of people like this. People, way, people so, so overly qualified on both sides. Mm-hmm. And people just went with their emotions, you know? And that's how they voted, with their emotions. And other people voted... This is just a primary. It started now and they thought they voted on emotions, they voted on on what somebody else said that they're going to do for them or something like this. And it narrowed down to Hillary and Trump, mm-hmm. two of the most inept people on the planet. Right. <laughs> well, besides Bernie, mm-hmm. 
it, it's like are you, out of all those people that was highly qualified to be the president, you came down to these two. Right. That's just a, it, it's like really. Well, <laughs> and uh, now you complain it. Anthony Weiner was sobbing as the judge spoke. Learned the final person's co- personal cost of a seemingly uncontrollable habit of exchanging lewd texts and pictures with women and girls. 21 months in prison. He's a Democrat. He was the essence of the brash political fueled by relentless work and unbridled swagger. Until now, he was the beneficiary of multiple second chances amid earnest yeah. vows that he had learned his lesson. And he never did. Of course not. And how can you say that this is an uncontrollable habit? Texas ain't all that new. <laughs> Chill. You just you might got an uncontrollable habit, but say what it is, you you you're a pedophile. Yeah, that's what your uncontrollable habit is. And I'm I'm not saying I'm not because I really don't understand what a pedophile what drives a pedophile or any of those things. I don't understand that. But you know, don't try to write it off in you know just in in, in some some smaller way. Nah, you're a pedophile, and in this country, this is how we treat pedophile. In another country, they'd have stoned you. Yeah, you would have been stoned <laughs> to death, which is the fitting punishment. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, so it's fitting to me. He didn't. He didn't. Uh, if he would have physically come in contact with any of these minors or anything like that, yeah. then I would definitely uh, be all for him getting more time. But uh, I, mean, no, I, I still can't see why. <laughs> yep. He faced up to ten years in prison. He should have got ten. And uh, he pled guilty. He so I, I think he got the lenient uh, thing because because he pled guilty. They uh, the the prosecution wanted him to get twenty one to twenty seven months, and he got the twenty one months. So yeah, um, he's texting a fifteen year old girl, and uh, his wife filed for the divorce. Uma Abedin, and uh, he pled guilty. And now he's facing jail time. Good and lock him up too. Don't be giving him any time served or. Or, or whatever it is, or however you're going to play it, so he doesn't go lock him up. Yep, he didn't ask for leniency either. He uh, accepted that he, he in his speech or in his response, he accepted full responsibility and that he was a changed man. I acted not only unlawfully but immorally, and if I had done the right thing, I would not be standing before you today. He said, crying, as he addressed the judge. Yes, yeah, crying. He- you get in that jail, somebody's gonna punch him in the face. Somebody got a little sister, a little daughter, or something like that. And 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 you know, they 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 do a little bit different in jail when it comes to the way they react to situations. What makes you want to go after underage girls? So that's what I don't understand. I don't understand that. Like, what it just makes it, it's something. I I understand people are sick, and sometimes people they just. Uh, just can't help themselves from doing some things that they do. But there is something really, really wrong with targeting minors. Yeah. I can see like, oh, wow, who is that woman? She looks beautiful. And then you, she looks older and you find out she's younger. That's one thing. But to target minors, yeah. that's, uh, he's sick. Yes. It, like, what are you going to do with a little girl? Right. Play house? Let's have a tea party. <laughs> It's like, please. Yep. No, boring. Boring. I measure them like this. They can't tell me that the theory of relativity, they're too young. <laughs> I don't even know the I don't even know the theory of relativity. So uh yeah. I he should go to he he should be in jail. I if it was me I would have I would have uh, been for him to be stoned. Yeah, and flogged. And, and flogged first. But uh, you know, that's the that's that. Yeah. Uh, in, in other news, uh, a Worcester group opposes physician-assisted suicide. A local organization is against the state house bill that, if passed, would allow legally assisted suicides for terminally ill patients. Um, how you how do you feel about assisted suicides? I'm not for suicide in any kind of thing, actually. But then, you know, because I always talking, but then, <laughs> mm-hmm. but the real reality is it's going to happen. It's going to happen because we, we're, we're, we're convincing ourselves that life really isn't that, 
that important and stuff and that this would be a good thing that we're doing because the people are suffering and we use all these nice little negative words to 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 give justification to us mm -hmm. when the, the whole justification might be oh Man, they're really putting a burden on my lifestyle because I have to take care of them and I have to do this and it's costing me money over here and everything. Mm -hmm. I really love them, but I really wish that they would just let go and die. But you also position assisted suicide is going to be something that's going to come to come to be eventually. I don't know with this one bill, but eventually it will because that's just where people's mindsets are. Life is cheap. Um, so it's easy for me to sit here and say I'm against it under any circumstances. Mm -hmm. Then I watch like uh, movies or I watch documentaries of people who are suffering from terminally ill diseases. Yeah. Like where their their body, they lose control of their body, they become paralyzed, and then their breathing stops because their their chest becomes paralyzed, and then they just die, and yeah. they suffer through that entire <clears throat> thing. And it's young people, sometimes young people, women in their 30s and 40s that have these diseases. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they want to end it while they're able to walk or before the disease gets that bad. On the other hand... Uh, and there's advances in medicine every day. Every day. Uh, there's talking about cures to diabetes now. There's always something that uh, you can look at and say, man, if I was alive for that, then you know maybe I wouldn't have decided to do what I did. Yeah. So I'm kind of. Uh, it's wrong. It's just. I wonder. You know what? I'm tough what? I'm gonna look at the I'm gonna look at the Bible and see what the Bible says about suicide. I'm pretty sure there's something in there that allude to the fact that suicide is wrong. But uh, I, I I'm sure they said thou shalt not kill. Right. Uh, kind of killing, you know. Just well, a different word. You can pretty it up all you want to. You're dead already. Which if you is, if you have the terminally ill illness, no. No, you ain't dead yet. Did can you? Say you got a terminally uh, ill cancer and stuff like yep. that. Yep. And you know you're going to die and stuff. But say you, you're 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 a musician, and you, you just always had in your mind this one this this one piano thing that you got to get out before you die. And yep. you put it down, and it's one of the greatest inspirational pieces that was ever written and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That could happen. You know, not even all you 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 wrote. An inspirational um, poem or something like that, or you you you're you you're a scientist and you you've been working for twenty years on 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 some kind of scientific thing that's gonna that's gonna make energy cheap, right? For everybody and affordable, and if you killed yourself, that the next day the the answer might just have been on the next day, you know? I I mean, I don't think anybody should ever ever just do that but it's such a personal personal thing i don't think they definitely i do not think that you should that physician assisted suicide should have anything to do with the physician or the family well um should be about you you want to do it well from a, you. a biblical standpoint there's six people who committed suicide in the bible uh mm -hmm. five of the men huh I didn't even know that. Yep, six people. Uh, Abimelech, uh, Saul, Saul's armor bearer, Apithel, oh, yeah. Zimri, Judas, uh, and, and uh, Samson. Five of those men were noted for their wickedness uh, when they committed suicide. And Samson did it, not necessarily to, he knew he was going to die, but his goal was to kill the Philistines. That's right, that wasn't suicide, that was a battle strategy. Well, yeah. <laughs> kamikazes is a battle strategy too, and they kill themselves. So, uh, yeah, um, Samson goes to kill the Philistines and not himself. Uh, the Bible views suicide as equal to murder, like you said. It's a, uh, it's a uh, thou shalt not kill. Uh, God is the only one who is able, who should be able to decide when and how a person should die. Mm -hmm. We should say this with the psalmist: "My times." are in your hands, Psalms 31, 15. So that's what the Bible says about suicide. Uh, and, you know, Saul, Saul you know, he, he, his suicide was the 
a cowardly way out. He mm -hmm. didn't want to be taken because he's the king and be disfigured and all this stuff. Yep. And his, his bearer, he just stupid. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, okay, here. You kill me first, then kill yourself. Right, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. Um, nothing is said about Saul's armor bearer's character, though. But even though it was, stu it was stupid to kill himself. So, <laughs> yeah. There's definitive uh, things on what the Bible uh, says about suicide. But still, it's not an easy decision. I don't know. No, no. I agree. Not easy. Yeah, if I was dying, if I was under a lot of these diseases, these crippling diseases, would I be able to, would I be able to resist the urge to uh, want to commit suicide? But uh, under the proposed legislation, a terminally ill patient could voluntarily make an oral or written request for aid in dying and a prescription for medication to bring about a peaceful death. Yeah. Uh, a physical assistant in family care said she's worried that the bill could shift the way the medical community looks at diagnosis patients. My thing is, if they have medications that can kill people peacefully, what if they get out in the streets? Oh, they will. Oh, that's scary. Most definitely you get the pill, you know, and they will charge you for it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm sure they'll get out into the streets, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, much, pretty much sure that eventually those type of things will, 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 will be commonplace. Yeah, but unfortunately it opens up the floodgates yeah. because it'll go from terminally ill patients to people who just don't want to live anymore, to people with uh, depression, oh, to people who, who suffer from anxiety and they just want it to stop. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, everybody's uh, doing it. Yeah, and, and I, I'm really sorry, folks. I know you're going to hate me for this, but I think that I say 70% of people who have depression, you're not depressed. You're lonely. Mm. You're bored. Mm -hmm. You're not depressed. It's just a word that seems to fit, so you take it, and then you find the symptoms for it, and you try to juxtapose those onto yourself. So you. You know, you're, you're lonely and you're bored. Yep. Do something. Kiss a person. Say hello. Do <laughs> do anything, you know? But, you know, I, I think that the majority of the people who have depression are like that. Yeah. Because they say to you, right in their well, you just don't know what it feels like to have depression. Obviously, you're talking to me, so how depressed can you be? Right. You know, you're trying to, you're trying to spark an argument. Well, it, it is a brain cool. disorder, I guess. They, yeah. I guess it's a scientifically proven brain disorder. So. Yeah, this depressed is really psychologically ill people with depression and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And there's, there's, there's disconnects within the synaptic connections within the, 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 the brain, the brain nucleus, the dendrics and the, ac the, the action, I or something like that. I don't that. know. The big one. Then there's a disconnect in there. Yeah, it, there's a physical manifestation to this. But then the, you got all these other people, they're just lonely. Yep. And they're bored. And you're not terminally ill. No. And according to the bill, a terminally, a terminally ill patient is described as someone who is expected to die within six months, whether or not treatment is provided. Prognosis is very important for patients to understand the seriousness of their illness, no question. Yeah. So they, even though yeah. this bill is coming up, they do plan on taking it serious, but there's still people who oppose it. They, they need to take it serious. Yep. And then once it's be taken serious and stuff like this, hospital administration and the government, the politics, how are we gonna capitalize on this? Cause we are a capitalist society. Yep. What's the money for me? You right. Know? <laughs> Instead of facing the care, on their current condition, whatever it may be, they have a fear of the future, Ms. Correa said. So they end their lives not even knowing what the future will even bring, yeah, just based on an estimate that is not that accurate. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. You don't know what you can do if, if, until you try it. You yeah. Know? And it, just because you're dying doesn't mean that you, you're not functioning. Right. And some people, you know I mean, some people, yeah, you're in great pains and stuff and great... You're, 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 you're really miserable within your pain and stuff, the physical pain, the mental anguish, the, the always stress, I don't want to die and all these things like that. And you start dying way before that you actually have to. Right. And, you know, and, and I think those are the people that's going to run right to the suicidal pill and stuff. And 
to be at two years out from their death, you know, and they say, I, I'm, I'm going to get the pill and take it. Which is another reason why uh, it shouldn't be, uh, I think I, I'm kind of against it. Because once you start having that illness, yeah. you start getting depressed, and then your mind automatically wanders to suicide. Yeah. So you're not even thinking really clearly. You're just uh, probably so down on yourself that you just think suicide is the answer. Oh, yeah. I mean, then you go to these old cliches. Oh, well, my family will be better off without me. And at least they'll get my insurance. Yep. Yep. And all these things like this. This is a noble, honorable thing that I'm doing. Yep. Yeah. Typically what happens when a person gets to be old, their health gets compromised and they get depressed and they feel as if they are a burden on yeah. society. Yeah. And that's probably not the best time to make a decision. When you are <laughs> sad and depressed, you do not want to make that kind of decision. So, uh, uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm kind of with them on it. And then give me the word old, folks. Why do you need to have to say to yourself, I'm getting old? Right. That You're not getting old. Nope. No, you're, you're just moving on, getting yep. vintage. Yep. <laughs> getting expensive. Right. <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, hope, I hope that they don't have suicidal. But then, on the other hand, there's some people... I'm not for I'm not for people prolonging prolonging somebody's life in the hospital when when they're physically dead and and cause we like you said earlier we have the technology to keep people alive on yep. all kinds of machinery and some people just won't let go their family said no nope, no nope, no nope, you got to we're going to have resuscitation orders on these people and it's it's like. They're not here. That would happen with my mother when I went into the hospital. You know, I come up from Texas, and and it, my brother and, and sister had her on that thing, keeping her. Well, you better get this thing off of her. She ain't here. Mm -hmm. She ain't been here forever. You know, so you know. Nah, no, we unplugged that. She she ain't here. Y'all can call me names if you want to and do all your crying, but you doctors take that off. I just read today that a man who was uh, in a vegetative state for 15 years after getting some kind of a surgery implant put in his chest yeah. started showing signs of consciousness. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what God has in mind for this guy. And this is just where I put it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, science is wonderful, but God makes those decisions. Yeah. I, that, at least that's what I believe anyway. God says, okay, you have to do this. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to, but he says, hey, can you handle this for me? Yeah, yeah, just wake me up. I've only been asleep for 15 years. Okay, he can do that. Right. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't, I don't know what that's all about, but that, just because of my belief, I firmly believe that God's plan is God's plan, and if, if it seems totally bizarre like that there mm -hmm. who am I to say that's his plan not mine that's his plan he can do that well if you have the ability to keep someone alive and you let them die is that uh killing them no you don't think so no not with technology inside you just to keep them alive but if they're it, it I don't know what you mean <laughs> okay so uh if thou show if, if, if letting a person die Mm -hmm. if, if, so committing suicide is murder. Yeah. If a person's in a coma, they're still alive. Yeah. If you pull the plug, if that's that's making an action that ends up killing the person. They no, were alive if, until you pulled the plug. No, if if you just have them on there and they're not breathing on their own, there's no brain function going. All they got is you're keeping the hot pumping blood around like that, just like a car. Okay. You know, the fuel goes round. The wheels aren't moving anymore because the wheels don't work. But the 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 the, the fuel still goes round. I think that you, if somebody in that situation, I think that's selfish on the part of the family. And I think that the family just didn't appreciate and love the person. I think a lot of families fall into this too, that they didn't appreciate and love that person when they were healthy and, and in tune. Mm -hmm. With like, and now they're feeling guilty about themselves, so they're gonna do everything to 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 get that last minute to say I'm sorry, right? You know, and not be able to say I'm sorry, but that's what they really want. They want to say I'm sorry, I I love you, and all this stuff like that. 
people tell it to your folks now, today, on their way to work, when they come home. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to buy them flowers or anything. Just tell them, hey, you're home, I love you. Right. There you go. <laughs> and, and, and then you don't have to worry about when they die. <laughs> Oh. All I'm right. a little callous though, because I don't think I think I think life and death is a very personal type of thing like that. So then would I be in favor of physician assisted suicide? I'm not in favor of it, but if, if somebody really is in that much pain and that much anguish to where they really can't go on and stuff like that, then then and, and the only thing that they see for themselves is, is that they die. That's their choice. I give everybody the choice to make on their own. That's your choice. Don't, nope, don't, stay alive until you die. Yeah, I, I mean, that's what I would opt for, is you stay alive to, until you die. But if, if really, that's your choice. If you're really, really somebody like me, because I don't know what misery comes from, you know? Mm -hmm. I see it all the time. I see miserable people, but then when I try to dissect why they're miserable, it always comes back to, you're not loving enough. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know? Love a little bit harder, and then you're not going to be miserable. And just love for free, not love for a reward or something. Yeah. But that's Archangel, so <laughs> that's my whole that's my whole movement. All right, so we got uh, one more story left before we call it a, a show. Um, NFL um, National uh, Anthem Flap sees Steelers coach Mike Tomlin wrap Alejandro Villanueva while his jersey sales <coughs> soar. Mm -hmm. So, Sunday, the Pittsburgh Steelers played, but before the game, while every other team, they were either kneeling on one knee or holding their arms together. Mm -hmm. There were a couple teams, I think the, uh, not the Falcons, the Eagles and uh, and uh, the Steelers and maybe one other team. Yeah, didn't come out. Didn't come out at all. They just <clears throat> stayed back and they announced that they were not going to come out for the national anthem at all. So while the Steelers, as an organization, said we're not going to come out at all, one player from the Steelers, Alejandro uh, Villanueva, Whoa. did come out. Hmm. And uh, he stood, and for for the national anthem, and his jersey just became the hottest buy in the NFL. Uh, the top seller in the league from the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive tackle broke with his team and walked out of the tunnel for the national anthem. The Steelers had decided as a group to stay in the locker room. They were one of the three <laughs> teams to sit up the uh, anthem after President Trump said NFL owners should fire players joining the protest. Trump referred to a player who disrespects the flag as a son of a beeple group. <laughs> On Monday, Villanueva's 78 jersey, number 78, was outselling big names like Marshawn Lynch and Aaron Rodgers on the NFL shop. Fanatics, which manages the site, said it had become the top seller across all of the sports platforms. Mm. Is this because... It, was that a heroic move by him to come out even, even against his team's wishes to stand for the uh, national anthem? Was that a heroic move? Yes. Not in the sense of the civilian attitude. He's a United States Army Ranger. Okay. He's one of the fiercest people on the planet. Okay. Yeah, you know, and and that that's why he 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 not only was obligated, he was he was. He was moved by his own inner value system to come out and do this. He did three tours in combat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? So that's why he came out to do this. He his he he is different than just being in the military when you're in one of the high speed type of um, organizations like that because you chose to be in that part of the military. A lot of people go into the military for educational <clears throat> reasons. A lot of people go into the military for for um, just to test their mettle. He he once when he was in there, he knows what he he had to do to become that special person, mm -hmm. and he know that within within this country, you know, this country looks up to people from special ops yep. and stuff like yep. that. Yeah, and and I know this stuff, and. And he, he went out there because he sees himself 
and in his who am I thing, mm -hmm. he sees himself not as a, a, a NFL football player first. He still sees himself as an Army Ranger first. And the Army Ranger motto is sua sponte, of our own accord. Right. So he doesn't stand with anybody on anything. He takes care of business that needs to be taken care of. Okay. And that's the motto of the of the uh, of the Army Ranger, a sua sponte of our own accord. All right, that was the dumbest thing that he could have done in his life. <laughs> Very dumb for him to do that because not only because if he wanted to do that, he should have said that to his team when they decided because they decided as a group not to come out. So what he did was he made his coach look bad, he made the owner look bad, and he made his teammates look bad when he came out and did that on his own against the team's wishes. He's, he, he may be an Army Ranger, he may have been an Army Ranger, he may have been all that stuff and all that stuff is fine, but on that day at that time, he was a teammate of the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers and he turned his back on them when he went out and did that at that time. Shame on him. I, I, I gotta have to argue this for a little bit more probably on the next show. He he did not turn his back on look at all those people on his team, they know who he is. They caused him embarrassment. He they, caused embarrassment. It might have caused them embarrassment or not. I think it caused them more a sense of pride to say, Yeah, we know that th this person this is one of our teammates that like this here, and this is one of our teammates that not only plays football for us on the offensive line for for the, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, he played he played on the offensive line for this country. Yep. If he wants to go on out there, go on out. And there. if he would have told them that that's what he <laughs> was going to do, it. they would. But if he would have told them that that's what they're going to do, they would have announced it. But see, he should have commu. This is where communication is makes you wrong, no, no, He should have communicated it. This. This is where communications is manipulated to go with all them nope. little, them little self-help people and yep. stuff. Well, you should have told us. You know me. If he would have yep. communicated it, they would not have released a statement. They released a statement before the game. He went against the statement. They would not, if they would have known that he was coming out, they would not have said the whole team. They would have probably said, nah. Bill Nuova is going to come out while the rest of the team stays in. Yeah, absolutely. Nah, he, nah I, I don't know. I just know that the teammates, his teammates know who he was. But he said the players came to a unified decision except as to what, what they would do. To, <laughs> no, it wasn't except one. He was one of the teammates during the anthem. He, you know what it was? He, ref, he was scared to speak up. <laughs> ah. This man who has fought for this country and probably seen bullets coming at him was scared <laughs> to speak up against his coach and his teammates. And then just decided at last minute that knee jerk reaction, he was going to get up and run out and speak and, and stand up for the country for the national anthem that doesn't care about him. Shame on him. He's a villain. He's not going to be a villain the way, but which means the president that represents that flag right now probably doesn't care about him at all. He didn't say anything about Puerto Rico, didn't say anything about Mexico, the earthquake in Mexico. The president only cares about himself, and now he's doing this stuff. It's tragic, true. Well, well, well. well. My boy, my boy probably, maybe your scenario is right up to the point where he, 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 his value system overwhelmed his, 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 his um, self-preservation. Yep. So he valued, what he held to and valued to him, his belief system said, I can't do this and went out. You might be absolutely correct, but he, his belief system and his value said, I'm going out there. Yep, it did. Yeah. And he turned his back on his team doing something. But he did not he didn't turn his back on his team. He's, I don't I don't think he did. I think his team knew and no, he, he did And he wasn't about to turn his back on what he calls his country and his flag. Okay. He wasn't about to do that. Well if he said that uh villain away but said, remember it says a through a sponte of your own accord. Right. Okay. Not so somebody else. Right. So Villanueva, he <laughs> said, and I quote, he only spoke to the quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger, the quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers, also said he thought that the team should have came out and stood for the uh, anthem, but he still stayed back with the rest of the team because that's what they decided as a group. Whether Ben Roethlisberger agreed or not, 
he, which he didn't agree, he at least stayed back and respected the majority of the group. It was a majority thing. The majority of the group said we're not standing. So Ben Roethlisberger begrudgingly stayed back there with him. Villanova, Villanova snuck to Ben Roethlisberger and said, Hey, Ben, I'm going to go out. Cause don't tell nobody because I'm going to go out when it's time. I'm just going to sneak out. And he snuck out like a little rat and then got out there. Now he, he went to, he went to Rod Burson. Ben, <laughs> yeah. I'm going out. Why didn't he say that, that to the whole team? Because that's what I do. When the wolf is at the door, I open it and I beat the wolf. When the wolf tries to cross the bridge, it's me that he sees, yeah. not anybody else. And and he said to the world, Billy Gogruff's cover. <laughs> Well, he was dressed as a sheep when the team decided to stay in the back, and he walked around and tiptoed around as a sheep until it was time to go out, and then he came out and stood. Look at I think, I think, punk. I think that's a, I think, well, I put my solidarity with my boy. No, I'm not doing that. I, I just, listen, I don't, too. Black parade. Right, I, listen, I don't, I don't have no problem with him coming out. I have a problem with him not telling the team. <laughs> And then coming out, he should have said, "Listen, I'm not. I don't care what you guys voted. I'm doing this." Instead, he put egg on the face of the team that released that statement, and now he's Mr. Popular. But I bet he has problems with them, them teammates. Them teammates and the best. ain't gonna give him no flap for you, Chris. They better. Y'all better give they him flap. They ain't gonna give no flap. They gonna. The man did what he had to do, and just like all the people taking the knee. I have no problem with all the people taking the knee or if they want to stand that attention and salute. I have no problem with them doing doing that. It's just, you got to do what you got to do. And he did what he did. And that's what he's supposed to do. And if the team, they, it ain't luck. We're all going to stay here. There's never a total agreement on anything. So it's like, what? We're all going to stay here? I'm not staying. You don't know if he didn't tell them I'm not staying. He did. It, it says it here that he did not tell. Oh, that he did. He only. It says he. Spe- and it, this came from him. His quote specifically. He only told the quarterback that he was coming out. He That's did not right tell there. the team. No, the quarterback's not the coach. It's a quarterback's not he, the owner. But he's a military man. He told the captain. He's the captain. I'm going out. The captain's not the coach. You he tell is the, the coach. coach. The captain the is captain. not. The captain is the quarterback on the field. The quarterback is not the coach. The coach, he's, he's the Tom offensive. Brady is not Bill Belichick. You go to Bill Belichick and you tell Bill Belichick what you're going to do. You don't tell Tom Brady. Well, you don't know what Belichick is. Tom Brady, Tom Brady, I don't like Tom Brady. Tom Brady's the captain on the offensive part of that right, field. Right, right. He's the offensive lineman. He protects the captain. He told the captain, I'm going out. Does, when it's he, payday, he, does he go to he, Tom Brady for his no, checks? he did what he does. He's still a serviceman. He's got, he's got a military mindset. And that's another thing these people all got all upset about trying to make it into some military thing. And it seems like they don't understand how the military mind works. Mm-hmm. The military mind is nothing like the civilian little mind. The civilian mind is it, it got a whole bunch of different different justifications that you put in. The military might not have that justification. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll do it. Okay. Yes, sir, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Little automaton robots, but that's what they do. And the motto of the United States Ranger, and I said it a couple of times, I threw a sponte of our own accord. That right. means I don't need anybody else to stand with me. He was if not wearing ten wolves right there. Bring them on! I'm beating all of them. He was not wearing <laughs> army fatigues that day. He was not He's in uniform. He did not have a gun on him. He had a football uniform on him. NATO folks, I've always been. I've been in the military in years. I still wear military okay. fatigues. This is Mission Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Just NATO. And if you had a Patriots jersey on, you better do. If you had a Patriots jersey on, you better do what the Patriots <laughs> tell you to do at the time. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, yeah. Troop, uh, we've come to the, the show has to close. We have to get ready to head down to uh, Main Street in Worcester for Voice of the Voiceless WCUW oh, ninety one point three FM. Uh, we're going to be talking about the mayor race. That's right. We'd like to have both mayor candidates, mayor, mayorial candidates call in. Yep. Yep. Uh, Connie Lukes and, and Joe Petty. Call in. 
Uh, yeah, we're going to also, <laughs> yep, we're going to talk about the Worcester's uh, eight hundred thirty-eight thousand dollar tax deal for millionaires who wants to build uh, a marketplace. Another, oh, I'm so t- I, I, I don't I can't wait to talk about that. And uh, we'll talk more about Alejandro Villanueva, the coward who was <laughs> too afraid to say anything to his teammates. Uh, that's all we got for today. I'll see you guys later. It's your boy Truth It. <laughs> And this is Trooper Joe. I'm telling everybody to go have that fun. Ah, <laughs> <laughs>